Nancy Alamek from Lena Patchwork and I want to do a few tutorials with you today and we want to start with the basic one, the hexagon and how do we cover our shapes. But first of course we need to prepare our fabric. So what we do is we have our fat quarter which is nicely ironed and then we have to figure out how big do we need our paper, to, uh, our fabric strip to be. So here is the paper shape. Uh, it's a one and a quarter inch hexagon. We measure our hexagons on the outside edge. That's important because then we know what other shapes will fit to it size wise. So this is a one and a quarter. So first of all, I want to say it's really easy to work with paper shapes if you cut your fabrics into strips and that is also applicable to hexagons. So what you need to find out is how big a strip do I need for my, for, of my fabric? The easiest is to use a ruler and you lay your paper shape under it. Let's just take that out of the way. And you give yourself a generous seam allowance. You see the seam allowance is not important. Um, it doesn't have to be accurate quarter inch like we normally have in sewing patchwork but it has to be big enough that we can comfortably fold the fabric over the edges. So here I would say a three inch seam allowance or a three inch wide strip gives us plenty of seam allowance to work with. So you have your fabric edge nice and straight. Put your ruler on. All right, so that's your fabric strip cut. Three inches wide. Plenty wide enough for our uh, paper piece, so we can put the fabric away. Now we need a really nice pair of scissors, nice and sharp, that we only use for fabric. And then you can cut the rest of the strip by hand. So you lay your shape on, hold it in place, and then just eyeball a generous seam allowance all the way around. So there's one. So we want to make a hexagon flower today. So we will need six petals for the flower and one middle bit. So I'll just cut some more of these, just so you can see how easy it is. I just hold it with my fingers, but if you wanted to, you can also use a little pin, just pin it on. And then you eyeball the seam allowance, as we say. That's that one. Do a few more. We sort of try to aim for a, an approximate seam allowance of three eighths. As I say, it doesn't have to be accurate, it can be a bit wonky, as long as you have enough to comfortably fold it over the edge and enough to actually hold it in place while you're tacking the fabric. So here we got a few of these. Obviously we have to turn them over to the, to the wrong side. We want to put the fabric, uh, the paper piece onto the back of the fabric. Now, I, because this is quite a large piece, I'm going to pin it with a little pin. These are tiny little applique pins. They're super sharp and I find them really useful. A bigger pin might get in the way when you are uh, tacking the fabric. Then we have to prepare needle and thread. So I like to use a darker thread for light fabrics or a light thread for dark fabrics just so that you can see your tacking stitches afterwards because we have to remove these eventually. So we take a piece of thread not too long probably the width of your shoulders cut it with the don't bite your thread it sort of shreds it makes it more difficult to thread the needle. Then we want to use a needle that's really fine not a big darning needle or so, it makes it too hard work. So I usually use a number 10, a sharp needle, which is sort of medium size. And rather than try and thread the thread through the eye of the needle like we are used to, so thread between your fingertips and then you literally put the eye on top of it. And I tell you, it's really easy, works about nine out of 10 times. Then we might make a quick fat knot at the end. That's that done. And now we're ready to baste our first hexagon. Now I want you to start on any of the edges, doesn't matter which one. In this case, you just fold it over gently. 
and we start in the middle of our paper shape, not at the end. Please start in the middle and we stitch all the way through and we do a tacking stitch and we come up again. That's our first tacking stitch. You can see, gone all the way through. Now I turn my paper shape and I fold the next edge over. Now I am right-handed. I work counterclockwise around the paper. And I make another tacking stitch and pull the thread through. Can you see how I have stitched <clears throat> over the fold there? I do that so that it's nicely tucked down. Now I can turn the shape again in a clockwise direction and fold the next edge over. Again, I make a tacking stitch and I continue in that fashion. Another tacking stitch. You only really need one large-ish tacking stitch per side. Do the next one. Turn, fold over, secure. Turn, fold over, secure with a stitch until you come to the last edge. Now, many people make the mistake to just try and fold the whole edge over like an envelope. It looks a bit like an envelope, at the back of an envelope. Don't do that. What we want to do is we only fold one corner at a time. So I secure this corner, do my tacking stitch, just like the other ones. Then I turn it again. And again, I want to fold the edge over the one I've just done. So I tuck it under, fold it over. You want all the pleats of the fabric, all the folds need to go in the same direction to the left if you're right-handed. <laughs> and now we're back at the beginning close to where we started on, where our knot is, and I just snip the thread and I have about a matchstick length left. And don't forget to take your pin out. So that's our first paper shape done. Easy, huh? Really not very difficult. So we'll do loads of these. And here's a few I have prepared earlier. Still one short actually, but we'll start with these. So for my hexagon flower, I will have one middle and then six, six petals. So I sort of turn them and twist them until I'm happy with, with the layout. And then I need to get a sewing thread to sew them together with. And I always like to match my thread color to the fabric color. So in this case here, I've chosen a, a lilac -y color which goes well with both. The better you match your thread, the less visible your th uh, stitches are going to be. Again, we cut not too long a, th a piece of thread and thread it on our needle. Tie a knot in the end. And then we pick up the middle piece and one of our petals. Right sides together, line up the corners and we start on the very corner and I do a stitch on the corner with a knot in the end and then I do a stitch on the spot. I call these anchoring stitches and now I whip stitch or over sew along the edge until I'm at the other end of the seam. You want to have your needle perpendicular to the paper piece, it just means right angles. Yeah, don't angle your needle sideways, it has to be straight. And you only pick up the bit of fabric which is on the edge of the paper piece. You don't have to do too many tight stitches. If you do one every couple of millimeters, that's plenty. Here again, you develop a kind of rhythm with these. You just keep stitching until you're at the other end. You will feel if you're going too deep because the paper is decent quality and it will give a lot of resistance. So if you've gone too deep, don't force it through, but try and pick up less fabric on the top. So I'm almost there. And again, we stitch to the very end of the, th of the seam. And on the edge, on the corner, we do an extra stitch, another anchoring stitch. 
the idea behind that is so when you fold it over, you doesn't you don't unravel your seam again. So here we are. Nice seam, can't really see the stitches, which is not so good for the camera, but there we go. So hexagon flowers, um, there are some techniques in how we sew them together, because you see the next shape will fit in here, but our thread is in the middle. So I could just sew all the middle pieces together, but then I still have all the petals that I need to sew together. So what I do is I turn it over to the left side and I weave my needle through the seam allowance on the back here to the outside, so away from the center piece, up that bit. So now my thread is on this end here. And now I can take my next shape, lay it on, so yeah, it goes there. Line it up. And now I start again with an anchoring stitch, just, just two stitches on top of each other, essentially. And then whip along towards the middle. On this sort of seam, I don't really know how many stitches I do, but probably around 10 or 15 for a quarter, one and a quarter inch. That's plenty. I mean, I always think of my sewing machine and how I set that up when I'm sewing. I don't need to have any tighter stitches than I have on a sewing machine. It will not come apart, don't worry about that. So I keep going, almost there. One more, and now my last stitch and my anchoring stitch. And I fold it open, turn it round and line up my next seam because now I can sew two. I have sewn this one and now I can sew that seam. It's a good strategy for sewing these petals because you don't have so many interruptions of start, stop, start, stop. Anchoring stitch and then stitch along. Now we do give our stitches a little bit of a tug to pull them tight, but don't yank them. That's no good, then you'll just snap the threads. But it makes them disappear into the fabric a bit more. And don't worry too much if your stitches show on the front. Once you take the papers out, the, the fabric seems to relax and they sort of disappear a bit more. And anyway, you've hand sewn this, you should be proud of that. Well, don't hide your stitches. So, almost there. Couple more. So, last stitch and anchoring stitch. Fold it open. There, almost done. Almost half a flower done. So again, I turn it around. Here's the middle of my flower. I weave my thread through the seam allowance to the outside of the petal. So that I have a new start point for another seam. Take the next one, pop it on, decide where I want to put it. Oh, maybe we'll turn that one around that way. Line up my seams, right sides together. First stitch, anchoring stitch, and then whip along. So what we want to do in a minute is we want to, I want to show you how to cast off, how to finish a seam, because eventually you will run out of thread and you have to start a new thread. What I tend to do is, let's see if we can get to the end of this. Yeah, we should be able to get to the end of the, of the seam. What I tend to do is I just go in the reverse direction over my seam for a few stitches. Show you that in a moment. So, last stitch, anchoring stitch. So now I go over the seam again, but in the reverse direction. So one stitch and another one. 
and maybe a third one. And now I, <clears throat> I just make tiny little stitches, weaving again my threads into the seam allowance so that the end of my thread is hidden and then I can cut that off. And there is our bits. So with one thread I managed to sew one, two, three, four seams, all pretty much in one go. It's not bad, is it? So I can now start a new thread and sew up this seam here. Now what you can see is, and a lot of people are worried, saying, oh, what, what do I do with this, the bulk of the paper here? Don't worry, just, just fold it. Make your sewing easy, fold it up. If you have trouble holding it in place, you can also use a little clip, or you can put the clip on this end here, to keep your seam nicely aligned and then start sewing again. So eventually, you will then end up with a flower like this one, the one I made earlier. And when we have sewn all our petals on, we can then remove some papers, but we only remove the paper that is sewn in on all sides, like this middle hexagon. So on this flower, I can only remove the middle piece. To do that, I have to remove the tacking stitches. And the easiest way to do that is you turn the flower over, you find your pointy little snips, here are my blue ones, and I look for my tacking thread, and I look for the knot, so there it is. It's one of the reasons why I like to use a different color thread, because seeing white on white is really hard. So here's my knot, I take the snips and I cut the tacking thread roughly on the opposite side of the paper shape. And now I can just grab my knot and pull the thread out and I can grab one of the other loops and pull that piece of tacking thread out. So now all the tacking stitches are removed, which means I can go in there and pull the paper shape out. And that can be reused, of course. So when you do that, as you go along in your English paper piecing, you can reuse the papers and you don't need so many papers to make a bigger quilt. So if the pattern calls for 3,000 hexagons, you don't need to buy 3,000 hexagons. Start with a few hundred, maybe three, four hundred, reuse how, however many you can, and then maybe buy another packet at a later stage. But don't go and buy 3,000, that's not necessary. And I say that as a business person, so believe me, it's fine. Hexagons. So that was the big hexagons. How do we do the smaller ones? It is, in principle, very similar. Only, for the little ones, we don't stitch through the paper. So you get your fabric for your small hexagons, and just like with the bigger ones, you take one of your papers, and we need to find out how big do I need to make my strip to fit my hexagons. Now I can have the hexagons lengthwise on the edge, or I can have them on point, doesn't really matter. Here it looks as if a two inch strip should work fine. So that's what we try, two inch strip. And now we cut the rest with scissors. So again, hold the paper piece on the fabric in place with your fingers. So initially we can just cut squarish pieces, trim off the excess to make it roughly hexagon shape. It doesn't have to be very accurate. So what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, got one. And then I have a middle which I prepared earlier as well. So that's our hexagon flower. Now we want to cover them. So again, we need our needle and thread. Here's one I prepared earlier. So we take the paper shape, put it on the back of the fabric piece. And rather than stitching through the paper, we're now doing um, sort of little gathering stitches on the fold. So you, what you do is you have to hold it in place, fold the first edge and then fold the next edge over so you have the first corner. And now rather than stitching through the paper, what you do is you just gather a bit of fabric around that fold. 
and then you make a stitch on the spot to secure that fold. Then you hold it, turn the shape and fold the next edge and hold the corner in place. Now, a lot of people think it is, uh, why don't we use this method for all the hexagons and all the other shapes? And I advise against using this method for any shape that is larger than one inch on the edges, simply because the, the paper is not secured as well inside, and that makes it inaccurate on the edges. So when you come to sewing together, you will find that either the paper shape shifts and it falls out if, while you're sewing, um, it is just simply meant for smaller pieces. I mean, if you find a method that works for you, by all means use it, but maybe not on the big, big hexagons. Another extra gathering stitch on the spot there. Can you see how I just jumped with the needle from this stitch to the next fold, did another stitch. Hold this in place, turn it, and jump straight with the needle to the next fold and secure it. This takes a bit of practice because the fabric sort of can move around a bit. And the more you do, the better you get at it. Again, we come to the last edge here. You do one corner at a time, just like on any other shape. This one here. The nice thing is these stitches remain in the fabric, we don't remove them. So a lot of people like this method. It takes a bit more practice, but it has really nice uh, results as well. Now that's my last edge here, my last fold on the corner. So I'm going to do an extra of those gathering stitches and then weave the needle through the seam allowance a little bit. So I'm casting off at the same time with my last stitch. So now you can trim that red short and there's your covered shape. So now we've got our six uh, petal hexagons and the middle and we can start sewing them together. But before we do that I just wanted to ha show you one more trick which I have up my sleeve for those of us who have trouble holding the paper in the middle of the hexagon shape. Um, because these hexagons are usually so small that you can't put pins in them and it gets really awkward. The thing we can do is we can use a glue pen. This is a non-permanent glue pen. It's a bit like a Pritt stick, but please don't use a Pritt stick because um, we don't know what that glue does to our fabric. It will usually bleed through and go really hard and crusty and you don't want that on your quilt. So what we do is we have the glue pen, we have our paper shape, and the easiest is to just put a dabble in the middle and then stick that onto the fabric and just hold it in place for a few seconds. So you don't put this on the fabric, you put it on the paper, okay? So now you just work this hexagon just like you've done the other ones. And the advantage is that it is a lot easier because the paper is sliding around so much. So this might actually be a really good hack for a lot of especially beginners out there. Although I always say, you know, you don't want to ride your bicycle with stabilizers for the rest of your life, do you? And you may not always have a glue pan at hand. So the more you learn to do it without those helpers, the better. And there we go. That's our seventh hexagon, but we don't really need that one. Now we want to sew our hexagons together. Again, we want to use a thread color that will match our paper shapes. So I've got this lovely sort of lilac-y color here, so we'll use that. Cut a length off. Thread our needle, my favorite method. Start with the middle hexagon and one of the outsides. Lay the two together, right sides together. Start on the corner with a stitch 
and a knot and do an extra stitch, the anchoring stitch, and then we whip along till we're at the other end. I have a lot of hexagon quilts which use very small hexagons and people always say, oh, it must take forever and isn't that difficult? Well, I've learned on this little size, so for me, they are far easier than the big ones. And what I love about them is that the seams are so short, so they're a bit faster as well. So you have more of an accomplishment. So that's our first seam done. Turn it over. Now I go away from our central hexagon to the outside through the seam allowance. So I can then start stitching the next hexagon. Now we're sewing from the outside towards the middle. So these hexagons here are three quarter inch in size, which means they are three quarter inches measuring from corner to corner on the outside edges. They are obviously not the smallest ones that are out there. Um, we also do a lot of miniature hexagons and the smallest one we do there is the 3 16th, which is really tiny. And you can see I'm just trying to keep a rhythm and just keep going. At the end I do an extra stitch, my anchoring stitch, now you can fold it open. And doesn't that look nice? You can barely see the stitches because I used the pale lilac thread. Turn it over. For, to sew the next petal on, I weave it through the seam allowance and come out at the outside. Turn it over, pick up my next hexagon and sew it on. Anchoring stitch. And sew towards the middle. So a lot of people find it really hard on their fingers and you can see my finger here is quite perforated from the blunt end of the needle and I now have to use um, a thimble I don't like to use thimbles, I don't really work well with them. So I have these thimble patches, they're called thimble pads. And they're little leather patches which have a very sticky back to them. And I literally just stick them where my saw bits is. And then that will protect my finger and aid many more hours of sewing, hopefully. These uh, thimble patches can be reused, so when you're at the end of your sewing session or you have to go off and cook dinner, you just peel it off and put it on a clean surface like your, you know, a, a plastic sewing box or something like that. And then next time you want to continue, you just peel it off and stick it back on your finger. Eventually, of course, they will lose their stickiness and then you might have to replace them. But they come in packets of 12 and they're really um, very, very impressed with them, actually. That ended years of suffering. Okay, so you can see how we're very quickly going to finish sewing our hexagon flower. But we want to leave it at this for today. Secure my needle for now. And of course, I've got a finished flower here which I made earlier. So how do we take the papers out of these flowers? Well, it's the same principle. We only ever remove the papers if a shape is stitched in on all sides. And we always remove them from the back side, obviously, because we don't have, we haven't stitched through the paper. We can just go in there, pinch the paper and pull it out. So it gets a bit damaged by doing that, but you can sort of massage them back into, into uh, place and you can reuse them. And I encourage you, always take all the papers out that are sewn in. Right. 
one and a half flowers done, 200 more to go for the next quilt. We better get sewing. Have fun. Bye bye.